Suppose we are given two series, summation a n, summation b n, and summation a n converges to a, and summation b n converges to b. Then does it make sense to take the product? Is there a natural product on this? Well, naively you would think that we can consider the product summation a n b n. Does this converge? Does this converge always? Well, let's take an example. Suppose I take a n to be equal to b n to be equal to minus 1 power n by square root of n. Then summation a n converges. Think about why this is the case. In fact, we have got a precise test that sort of tells you why this converges. Then summation a n b n is nothing but summation minus 1 power n by root n into minus 1 power n by root n which is just summation 1 by n which diverges which diverges okay so it's not always the case that if you take a series of the form summation a n and another series of the form summation b n and naively take the product summation a n b n that need not converge let's try to take a more refined product okay what we do is the following observe that the terms can be written like this a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 times b1 plus b2 plus dot 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 then rather than taking this series summation a and b and this product naturally by distributivity looks like a1 b1 plus a2 b1 plus a1 b2 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b1 plus a1 b3 so on I can write this product sort of by simply manipulating it algebraically without worrying about issues like convergence and validity. I can write it as summation cn where cn is summation k running from 1 to small n a uh, k b n minus k. That means I am grouping together all the terms from a i and b i a i and b j such that i plus j is actually equal to n that is how I am grouping the terms together this produces this c n ok. So, this each c n uh, is actually just summation k equals 1 to n a k b n minus k. So, this is an different product than this naive product sigma, uh, summation a n b n this is called the Cauchy product this is called the Cauchy product of the two series. So, more precisely this formula is the formula for the Cauchy product ok. Now, the question arises does the Cauchy product converge? Does the Cauchy product converge ok. In other words what is summation C n ok. Now, I am going to prove a very simple result. This is not the most general result on these lines, but it is more than sufficient for our purposes. Theorem. Theorem. I believe this is due to Mertens, but I think what Mertens proved is a more general result. What I am about to prove is much simpler. It is probably known much before Mertens. Suppose, suppose summation a n and summation b n both converge absolutely both converge absolutely ok call this a call this b say summation a n converges to a summation b n converges to b both converge absolutely then summation c n is just as you can guess a b and this convergence is uni uh, is absolute and this convergence is absolute. Let us see a proof and the proof is not very hard because I am assuming both series converge absolutely. Suppose, suppose summation mod a n is equal to alpha and summation mod b n is equal to beta. The aim is to show that summation c n 
converges absolutely that's the first first uh, claim in this theorem now how are you going to show that summation cn converges absolutely well observe the following look at summation mod cn n running from 1 to capital n okay now this will consist of terms that look like this mod a1 b1 plus modulus of a1 b2 plus a2 b1 plus so on various terms this is certainly going to be less than or equal to summation i plus j less than or equal to capital N mod ai mod bj right various I have just applied the triangle inequality to the various terms in the previous sentence now here is the catch this is in fact less than or equal to mod a1 plus dot 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 mod a n times mod b1 plus dot 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 mod b n notice that all the terms in this expression after you have expanded it out using distributivity all the terms here will be of the form mod a i b j but with the possibility that i plus j could exceed n okay so i must be precise i put a capital n that makes no sense it should be i mean i put a small n it should be capital n it should be capital n okay so every term that occurs here is of the form a i b j but i plus j could be greater than or equal to n uh, should be could be greater than n therefore you have this inequality that summation i plus j less than or equal to n mod a i b j is less than or equal to this product and this is certainly less than or equal to alpha beta because that's the that's what summation mod a i and summation mod b i converge to okay so what this shows is that the partial sums the partial sums of summation mod cn is bounded is bounded by monotone convergence theorem we are done we are done we have shown the absolute convergence of summation mod cn now let's go to the second part where we have to show that summation cn actually is equal to a b and here the trick is not that different what we do is we consider summation n equals 1 to 2 n of c n minus a 1 plus dot 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 a capital n times b 1 plus b 2 plus dot 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 b capital n let's look at this difference if you think about this difference for a couple of minutes you will notice that there will be plenty of cancellations and the only terms that will be left behind are those of the form a i b j where at least one of i or j is greater than 2 n so let's write that down we perform all these ca cancellations and then apply the triangle inequality and you can see in a few minutes of thought that what you will be left with is this quantity summation i equals capital n plus 1 to 2 n minus 1 summation j running from 1 to 2 n minus i mod a i mod b j plus mod b i mod a j okay so these are all the terms of the form a i b j where one of the indices is at least n plus 1 and after applying triangle inequality i have written it down as summation i equal to capital n plus 1 to 2n minus 1 summation j equal to 1 to 2n minus i mod a i b j plus mod b i a j so if you understand this step the rest of the proof is fairly easy now what i do is every occurrence of mod bj in this first term i replace by beta and every occurrence of mod aj in this second term i replace by alpha 
So I get this to be less than or equal to summation i equals n plus 1 to 2n minus 1 mod a i beta plus mod b i alpha. Just to ensure that it is clear that the summation is over both quantities, let me just put parenthesis. Okay. Now, simplifying again, this is less than or equal to summation i equals n plus 1. I won't go all the way to 2n minus 1, I'll go all the way to infinity so, of mod ai beta plus summation i equals n plus 1 to infinity alpha times mod bi. Okay. Now, both of these quantities are tails, tails of a convergent series. Both quantities are tails of a convergent series. This means that both, both terms summation i equals n plus 1 to infinity mod ai and summation i equal to 1 n plus 1 to infinity mod bi both of these converge to 0 as n goes to infinity being the tails of a convergent series. This just means that limit n going to infinity of summation n equals 1 to 2n of cn is equal to limit n going to infinity of a1 plus dot 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 a n a capital n times b1 plus dot 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 b capital n and this we know is equal to a b. Okay. So, this concludes, this concludes the proof. So, the second part is a bit tricky, but not really difficult. Just go through the proof once or twice, look through the notes also and make sure you understand which terms cancel and what terms we are left with and indeed we have that limit capital N going to infinity N equals 1 to 2N, CN is in fact equal to AB. Okay. Now, let me just make one remark, just one remark. So, we have assumed, we have assumed, assumed both AN and BN are absolutely convergent, are absolutely convergent. This is just for simplicity. This is just for simplicity. It actually suffices. It actually suffices if one of them, if one of them is absolutely convergent. The other needs to be just convergent. I am not going to prove this more general result. This result that I have stated and proved is usually sufficient for most of analysis, but it's good to know that there is a more general statement available which you can read up on your own. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched a module on the Cauchy product.